Undertale has a pretty underwhelming neutral route. Yeah, there's like 90 different endings you can get, but if you don't care about the story, there's not really a reason to play it over pacifist or genocide. But the same can't be said about Undertale Yellow's neutral route. I saved this playthrough for last as I expected it to be the least interesting, and let me tell you, it was far from that. Like most runs, we start in the Dark Ruins, ally with Flowey, and are given the option of choosing kindness or violence. But what if you chose both? Flowey wants us to reach Asgore and deliver justice, and by acting in self-defense, Clover gets stronger. As a reward for successfully surviving the Corn Maze, we take these conveniently bullet-shaped rocks and fire them against the next enemy we see, which just so happens to be Clover's own reflection. Without hesitation, they shatter the glass and look at the person they've become. Is this real? really what I want? Our mission was to investigate the missing humans who fell down, and Flowey told us that they were gone, killed by King Asgore. Clover destroys the mirror entirely, trusting Flowey and setting their mind on bringing Asgore to justice. But was killing an innocent bat really necessary? We continue through a hidden passage through the wall, finding a fashionable feather and cornering Delve. Because he's in our way, we have no choice but to fight. Yet he's never done anything to hurt us. In fact, he's been deliberately avoiding us. Usually, I forget how fast his thunderbolts are and get hit immediately, but this time, I was prepared. Clover's speed was incredible, and that led to overconfidence. If we were going to stand a chance against Asgore, we would have to get much stronger than this. So we strike him down, read his diary, and head outside for some cool fresh air. Flowey doesn't give us a speech that we can change our ways, and no one will know the horrors we cause in the ruins, so we continue down our path of getting stronger. Because Clover and Flowey are seemingly friends, they give him their name and the two flowers slaughter talking igloo before encountering the royal guard. The puzzles she has us do are really easy, and after we grab the icicles from this tree, monsters are quite easy to take out too. I'm still not that familiar with their attacks, and I do get hit sometimes, or a lot of times, but with the extra health I've been getting from leveling up, we barely have to worry about making mistakes. On the path to Honeydew Resort, Mo makes his first appearance. I usually just ignore him and move along, but I had a feeling I would need items in this run, so I took his entire stock. I've never realized just how many times we got stopped and stoned by new characters until now. A whole two rooms later, the underground postal service introduced themselves, and yet another two rooms later, the shufflers force us to play this surprisingly unrigged shell game. But by beating their game, we can enter Honeydew Resort, resist our urge to shoot everyone, and buy a defensive pin to put on my jacket. However, I didn't have enough money to afford it, so I went into the forest to forcefully rob every trihecta of their money. Before facing Martlet, we have one last puzzle to do, which took me quite a long time since this stupid rock kept narrowly falling off. But who cares about puzzles? The reason we're here is to avenge the fallen humans, and Martlet doesn't seem too keen on getting out of my way. But with every hit Clover dealt, she was evidently getting hurt. She told Clover that she didn't think getting attacked would hurt this much, and told him that she doesn't want Clover to feel the same pain. Clover hesitated before lowering their weapon. Martlet was the second person that was friendly towards them, the first being our good friend Flowey. And killing her wasn't necessary. In fact, defeating the royal guard would only make things harder in the long run. Together we stop the battle and fall into the dunes. With the help of Flowey our HP is refilled, and he mentions that our feathered friend ditched us, which could very well be true. But for now, we set our sights on getting the last bit of XP before Asgore. Before entering the cave section, we can load a piece of flint into our gun, which really helps out against the next few bosses. There's not a whole lot of encounters in the caves, since a lot of it focuses more on puzzles. And after we step back outside, Flowey shows up and tells Clover more about the king. He's a boss monster, meaning his soul will persist after death for a short time, and he's also immortal. But let's just forget about that. Because after we head right, El Bailador challenges us to a dance-off. I'm not a huge fan of dancing, but I'll gladly take the free XP. And right after we take out the flower girl, Flowey comes to talk to us again. But Martlet returns, which really pisses him off. At least we know Martlet didn't abandon us. Clover forgives her, and we sprint towards the Wild East. The Feisty Five capture us, and we have to complete several missions to proceed. This is my least favorite area in the game, because it drags on for quite a while, and it's essentially just a glorified cutscene. There are a few minigames here which is cool, and I do like the characters, but how am I supposed to reach Asgore when Starlo continuously compels me to complete missions? It wasn't just me who was getting impatient, because Flowey tells us that he'll have to intervene if Starlo keeps me here for a while. Luckily, we get gifted a new weapon, and after being declared deputy, the feisty four attack us, and as much as I would love to get stronger by defeating them, we deal nowhere near enough damage before Starlo ends the fight. Flowey tells Clover to get out of here now that they have the chance, but Starlo
Charla blocks the path, and we have no choice but to beat him in a duel. Although we couldn't beat the feisty four, Starla goes down quite easily. We didn't even break free from his lasso before the last bullet was fired. With the door to the steamworks open, Clover and Valerie proceed towards the castle. Because we're on a neutral run, Soroba doesn't accompany us, meaning that we get more chances to talk to our best friend. We can't get any XP here besides from Axis, and speaking of Axis, he accuses us of trespassing and using machinery without permission. Clover denies it, so Axis uses his lie detector and concludes that because our face is so emotionless, we were lying, and banishes us to the basement. Our good friend Flowey is there to save us, and after climbing through the vents, Clover takes out as many robots as possible to improve their skills with their gun. Axis disapproves of this, and chases Clover until they are cornered. But just before he attacks them, Flowey saves the day once again and blasts his arms off. Making our way across the steam vent of minefield, we enter the greenhouse where Gardner ensnares us. This is a pretty long boss fight in the past this playthrough, but astonishingly, she gets annihilated! Clover's journey of getting stronger was a success. Just like in Genocide, we take an alternate path through the rest of the steamworks. Flowey can't open the door for us, so we have to make ourselves an ID card to unlock them. The next door has a lock on it though, so Clover has to use their knowledge from science class to make hydrochloric acid by mixing chlorine and hydrogen. As soon as we melt the lock, Axis is waiting on the other side with his own highly corrosive concoction, but before he can use it on us, he drops it, melting the floor beneath him. Right before we settle things with Axis, the underground postal service comes to us with a very urgent letter from Martlet telling us to meet her on the roof of the underground apartments as soon as possible. Clover keeps us in mind while Flowey offers him a gift. The two of them have been through a lot and have come to trust one another dearly, so Flowey thinks it's time Clover tried wielding his friendliness pellets. Clover and Axis fight, and he can take hits very well. While Gardener fell in a mere three attacks, Axis can survive approximately eight attacks. And something I noticed was that if you don't reflect his magic, you can get in an extra attack before he strikes back. But after destroying him, Clover exits to Hotland to meet up with Martlet. Flowey, on the other hand, thinks this is a waste of time and tries to discourage Clover. But after refusing to turn around, Flowey lets them go because friends trust each other. Martlet tells Clover that she had a plan to stop their violence if needed, but after bonding with them, she throws the serum off the edge and explains that she can't allow us to see Asgore and that we should just live with her instead. Clover stands silently, not agreeing to this in the slightest, as Flowey kills Martlet in front of us thinking that we're abandoning our mission. It turns out, Flowey was never Clover's friend and has been using them to get the souls. Clover is not having this and tries to fight Flowey, but it's pointless since he's the one in control. Flowey kills Clover and snatches their soul from their body, but Clover hung on, and the strength they gained throughout their journey was being put to the test. To try and weaken Clover's spirit, he reveals that the whole reason Undertale Yellow exists is because he rigged the ruined switch, but Clover continues hanging on, which annoys Flowey. So after absorbing their soul for good, he chooses to fight Clover himself. This whole time, they were getting stronger so that they could avenge the five humans, and if you think that power would be put to use here, you'd be absolutely wrong. Don't forget, Flowey's in control and he's not gonna let us do anything apart from acting. Which is a problem considering he deals a lot of damage and I have never seen these attacks before. I knew I was gonna need healing in this drone, but there was nothing I could do other than try to hold on. By the third turn, I was already down to 16 health, and I thought it was all over. But that's when I realized that within the negative acts, there were three positive ones. Ender, Hope, and persist. These only only acts alongside check that Flowey allows us to use. In each of the three, heal you by 30 HP. It wasn't much, but it was enough to keep me alive for a while. And then Flowey toys with your emotions even more by imitating bosses you've killed on your run before going into an Omega Flowey section that caused my first death in the entire run. We don't technically die because determination or something, but we did have to restart the battle from the beginning. Knowing that I have almost no room for mistakes and that Flowey was in control of this entire fight filled me with fear. On that topic, can I just take some time to mention how terrifyingly good this boss is? Just look at these attacks, and it gets much worse later on. And after surviving his full screen attack, we enter another section where Clover tries to run away from Flowey and reach a save point. And I had no health going into this phase, which made that fear grow even more. The icing on the cake was thinking I could run past his vines here. The next attempt, Flowey immediately threw a brand new attack at me, which destroyed my hopes and dreams. You have to squeeze in between these petals almost perfectly, and I was always just too far on one side. 
I'm not trying to make this part of the script just deaths over and over, but I really can't help it when I haven't made any progress in the last three attempts. And after outlasting his chase phase, we pretty much get a reset back to the start of the battle just with different bosses he imitates. Thankfully we don't have to restart the entire fight if we die, but it felt like this boss was never going to end. While Zenith Martlet's length comes from pure difficulty, Flabby's comes from just being an insanely long fight. I spent an hour and 40 minutes holding onto my soul, and yeah, I did die a lot, but even then this boss was anything but short, because after surviving another chase, we get reset back again to deal with his final imitations. I assume this works as a sort of karma to Clover, and the less bosses we kill the shorter this fight is, because three phases of this seems excessive considering we're not even close to the end, especially when Flower decides to just kill me randomly when I have almost full health. But after the third chase, we escape Flowey. Or so we think. This whole cutscene was creepy, and I don't think I can do it justice. This whole video is based on one's perspective, so you're not getting the full experience by simply watching this far. I guess what I'm trying to say here is, just play Undertale Yellow. It's completely free, and it's one of the best fan games I have ever seen. And if this boss wasn't terrifying enough, now we're put into the true Omega Flowey phase. Ugh, this boss is just so good! We have to outlast his onslaught of attacks just like in Undertale, which are really cool might I add, and then he traps us and forces us to play roulette to decide which secondary phase to do, and every single one of these phases has a different theme going on. Have I mentioned this boss is amazing yet? This truly was the finale to Undertale Yellow. Each route has an epic final boss, and Flowey might just take first place for the atmosphere alone. And to seal the deal, just watch Flowey's eyes as Clover moves around. They didn't have to do this, but they did it anyway, and that goes to show just how much passion was put into this game. At first I was worried because I'd have to restart this whole section of the boss if I died, but I think instead of getting checkpoints after every roulette, you get them after every second roulette, because I was stuck on the last two for a almost 20 minutes, and as soon as I thought I had won, Flowey summons petals all around me which nearly killed me. I'm not sure if you can even die here, but he did a really good job raising my fear to its peak. And if that wasn't enough, the camera zoomed in as Flowey stared directly into my soul. He decides it's not worth it and tells Clover to make better decisions next time before resetting the save file.